In this clip, we're going to talk about the problem of multicollinearity. We'll do that in the context of a multiple linear regression model, which we have here, and our Gauss-Markov assumptions, assumptions 1 to 5 for the multiple linear regression model. We'll refer to, back to some of them. What we will be eventually interested in is the variance of a particular coefficient estimate. So for instance, beta 1. Now, in a simple regression, if you had a regression with only y as dependent and constant and x1 as explanatory variable, the variance for beta 1 hat from that regression would be sigma squared over SST1, where SST1 is just the sum of squared totals. Okay, And here's the definition. Now, however, we are looking at this multiple regression model, which we're seeing up there. In that case, it turns out the variance for beta 1 hat can be written down as follows. Sigma squared divided by SST1 as before, but now we also have another factor in the denominator, 1 minus R1 squared. What is R1 squared? It is the R squared from a regression of x1 on all other explanatory variables. So it will give us a measure of how x1 is correlated with all other explanatory variables. In general, so this was the formula written down for beta1 in particular, in general it will read the variance of beta j hat is equal to sigma squared divided by sstj times 1 minus are j squared. But the definitions are just as above, just with j instead of 1. So when we look at this formula, we can think of there being three elements in here. The first being sigma squared. That is, of course, just the error variance. Or it describes how much noise there is in our regression. And as that noise increases, the variance of beta j hat will increase. This is, in fact, one reason why you should be including all relevant explanatory variables, because by including them, you will reduce the variance of the error term and therefore increase the precision of your estimated coefficients. The next term we are looking at is the sum of squared totals of the explanatory variable in question, so the variable for which we want to estimate the uh, coefficient. And in general, the rule is such that if the variation in that variable increases, that means SSTJ increases, that will result in smaller variance for the coefficient estimate, so more precise coefficient estimates. Let's just think of a little example. Let's say you want to explain wages of employees as partly as a function of their education. What we're interested in is the effect that ed changes in education have on the wage, measured by the beta e here. Now, to find out from data what that effect is, we actually need different levels of education. Think of the extreme case. If you only had one level of education in your data set, then the data are just not rich enough to give you the information of how wage changes if education changes. So that's why in MLR3 we have the condition that we need variation in all explanatory variables and in fact the more variation the better in general. The last element in the variance equation is that blue term here 1 minus rj squared and we already discussed that rj squared gives us some measure of how the j variable is correlated with all other explanatory variables. So the rule basically is that if that correlation increases, that will result in an increased variance for beta j hat. So that means in terms of precision for coefficient estimates, a large correlation between explanatory variables is bad. Now, sometimes you don't have a choice about that. So high RJ squares, this is usually the issue that has been labeled multicollinearity. The result is that you may have fairly large values for the variances for the beta hats. Now you don't always have a choice. Sometimes the correlations are just large. However, 
it's important to know that only if that rj squared is equal to 1 are we actually dealing with a breach of our, one of our assumptions. And that assumption is the assumption that there's MLR3, that there's no exact linear relationship between our explanatory variables. If there was one, that is the case when the rj squared becomes equal to 1. If that was the case, that blue factor would become 1 minus 1 equals 0, and we cannot divide by zero, so you can see where the algebraic problem lies.